Greetings everyone. This is Joshua Seven Thunders, also known as Ivan Quinn. And this is Exodus Survival Ministry, um, my new channel. And I'm coming to you today um, just to kind of introduce my personal religion and where I'm coming from so that you don't think I'm what I want to say, a false prophet or somebody attacking your churches or your religion or your way of connecting with the Most High Creator. Um, I have my own personal spiritual way of relating with my Father in Heaven and my Sovereign Ruler, my King, Michael, Michael, Yahshua. Jesus, my King of Kings in the heavens, who is sitting on a throne in power and authority right now. And he's not an emaciated man being tortured on a cross. Um, I view him as ruling an authority, as a powerful son of God right now. And I don't see him, and I'm not racist, as a white man. Um, Christ had skin of burnished copper color. He had locks like lamb's wool. His cousin, John the Baptist, born from Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, was ordained, chosen, sent as a Nazarite of God. He had locks. He was a Nazarite like I am. He was born March 25th, I'm born March 26th. We are of the tribe of Benjamin, the war tribe. Um, so Christ didn't look like you envision him. And this is how Lucifer, Satan, and the devil, Caligastia, wants you to think contrary and totally opposite of how things really are. My look is looked down upon. But this is how the prophets looked. This is how Moses looked. This is how Joshua, the warlord of the Most High God, Jehovah, looked. We had locks. The vow of the Nazarite was given before we crossed the Jordan River. And as a saying, let your locks hang for war to terrify and melt the heart of the enemy. We're Dreadlocks, dread is something to be feared or contended with. It ain't no soft thing, this ain't no hairdo. This is my vow of separation unto the Most High Jehovah God for his service, separate from the churches like John the Baptist was, like Christ was, like his 12 apostles was. And that's why Christ got crucified, because the churches of that day was against him, because the synagogues was against him. The scribes, the Pharisees, the priests was against Christ. Christ was a carpenter. He built oxen and horse yokes, the wooden thing with the leather to keep the horses pulling in the same direction. He built the best boats in all the Sea of Galilee with the James and John Zebedee and their father, Zebedee, Zacharias, I think, Zebedee. Um, he made a lot of money, equivalents of hundreds of thousands of dollars now. He sent that all back to his mother Mary. His father Joseph died when he was 15 years old. He assumed leadership of the house. He had a rough time. Because, and this is out of your rancher book. I want you to read it. Don't be scared of it. It's the half that's never been told. It's the new scroll sent down. And you need to be open for the new way of God. God has new commandments. He got new marching, new marching orders right now, and I'm giving them. And I am not a perfect person, but I am qualified to teach. I'm qualified to lead. I'm qualified to guide. So I'm qualified. I might not be certified, but I'm qualified and bona fide to do what God has sent me to do. And when God tell me to do something, I don't want to go ask nobody, should I do it? I do what God has. He told me to talk to you today. 
about the proper way to reach him and about who I am. If you're going to listen to me, you should know who I am. I vowed to involve the Nazarite. It's separate from the churches as Christ was separate from the churches. Christ didn't re write not one book in the Bible. Not one. He was forbidden to leave images of himself because he wasn't to be leaving a religion about him, which a lot of Christians do. You have a religion about Christ, but you don't follow Christ's commandments and do what he asked you and commanded you to do. Some of you come out of your churches and you look down on people that's not a part of your way, your church, your religion. You look down your nose call them names. You don't have nothing to do with them. Look at them, call them names. If they have a different way to God than you, don't call them false prophets, apostates, or this, that, and the other. They got their own way. Now, God has a large family, and he has many ways within the Ten Commandments, within Christ's three golden rules. You need to be inside there. No true walk of God is outside the Ten Commandments. No, you cannot break the Ten Commandments. And because somebody assassinated our sovereign ruler, our king of kings, that you get away with murder. You get away with rape. You get away with stealing things because what? Somebody died for your sins? That's another lie. You die for your own sins. I would die for my own sins if I continued to do them. I gave up sinning. I gave up bad habits that God wouldn't want to do if he was inside my body with me. And this is what the Holy Spirit means, a fragment, a spark, a part of God's spirit. He clones off himself. And if you're a woman, it's the female part, it's the daughter part of God that comes into you. Because both male and female ushers out of the Father, and even down here, the man determines the gender. They swim out of the man. Little tails and heads, those are individuals. The woman has the home. She has the nurturing. Her spirit suckles the baby, the infant, as well as her breasts. Um, you can't have a, a baby away from its mother because it's not just feeding from the physical food, and they should be breastfed, and you should eat healthy, halal, kosher food so you can do so. They're suckling off your soul, too. They're feeding off your spiritual energy, too. And the baby needs that. And when babies are aborted, angels have to bring those baby souls back from the, the, the nurseries in heaven every day. Three times or so a day, I don't remember exactly what the Urantia book said, and lay that baby's soul next to that mother and let it suckle off of her soul because they can't do that. Your soul is meant for your baby and only your soul. Your breast milk is milk for your baby and only your breast milk. Not a slobbering big cow's milk is for your baby. Human milk is for human children and cow's milk is for cows. And if adults drink cow's milk, it builds excess mucus in your body, which is like glue, like it's snot. It's like the agar, agar, seaweed, sticky stuff in a petri dish in a laboratory. It causes one-celled growths, things that start with a V. I'm not going to say it here. They might not let me say it. Grows inside mucus is the breeding ground for the thing that's running around here that gets people sick. So if your mucus free, it's a lot easier to stay healthy. Now I'm gonna get back on my chat. I worship the most high first source and center, the creator of all the universe, the creator of Christ, Michael, and his brothers and sisters, sons, the creator sons and daughters of God to create universes that rotate around the central universe, Havana. I'm following Christ's commandments, but I'm not a part of the church. I'm not a part of a religion. I have my own personal walk, and each one of you should have your own personal walk. An individual relationship with your father and your mother earth who is conscious, who is alive. This planet is alive. Planets are alive. They take care of you. This planet has fought for me. 
this planet has changed the weather. My mother's changed the weather for me. My mother's dropped food to me. Um, when I was hungry in the wilderness, the earth will fight, will open the Red Sea with God in unison, will send down manna for you, will crack rocks and let clear water flow out for you, will send up a tornado in the middle of the desert, a whirlwind, like for me, when there's a line of police chasing me from El Paso, Texas, through New Mexico, when I got to the desert and they was closing in on me, I could see a long way behind me, um, there was a line of police at a pound and a half of ganja in the trunk. I had got caught at a stop booth. You know, I may or may not have a pound and a half of ganja in the trunk. I could be making this all up, right? I could have my fingers crossed. But I said a prayer to the Most High God, and I asked for his protection, and the earth and God came to my rescue. I looked to the left, and I saw a dust cloud kicking up. I saw a dark cloud form over the desert. You can see a long way in the desert, and you can see the rain dropping. It was like the road runner show or something. And it was coming for the highway, and I was heading north trying to get out, I was rocking my car, it was like a 6-7, and the police car was fast, trying to get up the hill. And this storm came, signs start blowing on the left, a gas station sign flipped and flew up into the air, um, trucks start wobbling and jackknifing, and I looked in my rear view mirror and the police was catching up on me, and a big semi truck jackknifed and blocked the whole highway and tipped. And they couldn't go, my, heart, my car was rocking, this storm came. And it was raining, it was wind blowing from a clear sky, it blocked the highway. Um, gas station signs, the big things, it was blowing off of the thing, flying up in the air, debris was going by. And I was the last vehicle to get up the highway before the semi jackknife flipped over and blocked the whole highway. I got away safe after my prayer. But the earth came to my rescue. Um, so I am a Nazarite Rasta, as Bob Marley was, as John the Baptist, as Samson, um, as Moses was. We have locks. Christ coming back, he's not going to look like you think he look. And you might discriminate against him, be bigot, bigoted against him, prejudiced against him. As a lot of you was prejudiced, well maybe not people watching me, people out there is very prejudiced and bigoted and racist against me. They would never think a man of God would look like me, but this is how men of God, this is how God wanted his men to look. The vow of the Nazarite is from God, and he, he forbade a Nazarite to cut or comb his hair, to prove holy by letting the locks of the hair of his head grow, and these aren't twisted, they're not curved, they're not manipulated. They grow of their own like this. And so um, I choose to do God's will. I choose to serve Christ and accept him as my Lord and Savior, my sovereign ruler, my king, king of all us kings, the 144,000, 12,000 from the 12 tribes of true Israel who obey the Ten Commandments who obey the Mosaic laws of cleanliness in the camp in God's communities. Um, and obey Christ's three golden rules. Have no God other than the Most High, Jehovah God. Love him with your whole mind, body, and soul. Do unto others as you do unto yourself and love your neighbors as yourself. Now when you're doing that, you can't go wrong and you don't need no religion. You got God, you got Christ, and I'm gonna get to the next thing. Obtaining your own personalized Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, with the Urantia book called An Indwelling Thought Adjuster. And that's what a Holy Spirit is, is an indwelling thought adjuster, a celestial being, a clone of God that was put into Jesus, whose real name was Joshua when he were brought to earth. And the reason, or Joshua in English, the reason his name was Joshua is because his daddy, Joseph, 
favorite hero in the holy writings was Joshua, the warlord of Jehovah God, who God helped conquer the promised land through. So he named his son after Joshua. And that's why it was named Joshua. My name is Joshua because God told me that's who I was. The one that Christ was named after, the warlord. No, I am not Jesus. Some people thought I said I was Jesus when I said that's who I was, Joshua. No, I ain't Jesus is coming. And when Jesus comes, the whole world is going to know. He's going to be coming in power and glory in angelic light, not in a roughed up looking body like it. And, and I was born, you know, I was born here. Christ was born of a, as a baby of the realm, just like everybody else the first, and they come and fully grown like a Melchizedek comes. There are angels that come fully grown, materialized into human form. They don't go through the baby stage and all that vulnerability. That was extremely brave and courageous for him to do that. He's coming in full, full power, glory, and strength with 200,000 angels with him. And he's coming as a conquering lion to conquer this time, not as a lamb to the slaughter. You still live in the 2,000 years lamb to the slaughter way. That's old, is outdated, is for them people at this time. God has new marching orders now. God has new commandments now. He has a new way for you now. We are universal now. We're not just in the Galilean area. We're all over the earth now. Trouble is all over the earth now. People need to exodus out of these cities all over the earth now. We got different orders. And just like the exodus the first time, this is the exodus out of Babylon instead of out of Egypt. On the wicked system by us Nazarite Rastas is called Babylon. And so is it in Revelations and the Prophets. Get out of Babylon, my people, before you share in their destruction and the seven plagues that's coming upon them. So yes, yeah, seven plagues, just like seven plagues in Egypt. Get it? Exodus the first time, seven plagues. Exodus the second time, seven plagues. But these seven plagues is going to be universal. These seven plagues are going to be way more dread, way more dangerous, way more horrifying, way more destructive of all the wicked people on this earth. It's greater this time. The exodus is greater this time. Christ's coming is greater this time. Everything is greater this time. I'm greater this time. You're greater this time. You shall do things greater than I, is what Jesus said the first time. And the reason we're going to be doing things greater than him is because he relinquished all divine, miraculous power that he had. When he went through the 40 days of decision and meditation alone in the wilderness and got tempted by the three rebels and conquered them, he conquered them up there on that hill. And it was over with them. He had already, and they was pissed off, and that's why they crucified him because he didn't bow to them. Instead, he conquered them in front of all the angels and they was embarrassed and they was shamed and they was pissed off angry and they, 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 they came violent against him after that. And they knew he gave up all his divine power. I wouldn't have done the same thing, but I can't, the angels wouldn't have done the same thing. Let me tell you, the host of all the myriads of angels in the heavens were present and God allowed Christ up on that hill of meditating to see the divine host all surrounded about him. Many different celestial intelligence, the most powerful archangels, warriors, seraphims, cherubs, Melchizedek, every angel in this universe was at, universe, was at his bidding and command and was there with him. And he allowed him to see him. And when you say sin, they will do anything you ask them to do. They're here to serve you. Now, how do you choose to use this great myriad of angels for the conclusion of your time here on earth? And you know what Christ did? He said, I, re I leave all, this 
decision making to my Father in heaven, and I agree to abide by the will of the Father in heaven. And the will of the Father in heaven is that I complete the remainder of my life on earth. I think he had three or four years left. He was like 29 or 30 at that time. And it was just after he got baptized for John the Baptist. And they heard the voice, my son, I am well pleased with you. And people heard it. And they knew he was God's son. Then. He departed from the crowds because he became a celebrity at that point. There were thousands to watch him get baptized. They knew he was going there. And instead of staying there to accept all the praise and glory, he departed and went up in the hill and fasted and meditated and prayed. And then he gave up all this divine powers there. No more miracles. No more angels protecting him. He was on his own. And that's why they crucified it. That's why he couldn't come down from the cross. That's why he couldn't get John the Baptist's cousin out of prison. Oh, why don't you get John out of prison? We know you got the power to do it. Because he had gave up that power. Just like a superhero giving up his superhero hammer or shield or speed or whatever he was doing. He had all. He could do anything. He could make things materialize, disappear. He could call down thunder, heaven, earthquakes, anything. Part to see again. He chose to be a man of this realm just like everybody else with no divine power anymore and he came down from that hill and his enemies knew it. Oh my God, how they tormented Christ. I'm not going to get into it because it's emotional what I know what happened next. And they tormented the Christians. He couldn't do nothing to save them divinely. All they could do was talk. Um, so me, there is no one way for everybody to follow. There's infinite ways, individual walks. We're like pieces in a puzzle. To live in harmony in a community that we must have in these last days, you exodus communities. We need farmers. We need people who are expert with water systems. We need people that are carpenters, builders, electricians, healers, cooks, teachers. We need all different kind of positions, not just one. We need people coming together with what you have to offer to your tribe, to your community, to your nation. God's nation, the new Israelite and Muslim nation, because the rod of Ishmael, son of Abraham, and, uh, and, uh, um, and the rod of Isaac, son of Abraham, and they both constitute two mighty nations, the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 tribes of Arabia, as prophesied, will come together in the end as one rod in the hand of the Most High, Almighty God, to thrash the nations that don't know Him. So, my orders, my commands to my Arabian, my Muslim nation, my Muslim name is Tariq, or Tariq, I-T-A-R-I-Q. I went through that for years. I went through five Ramadan with my Muslim brothers. And it was Ethiopia that saved the 70 Muslims that fled from Mecca. They were allowed um, what do you call it? When a, when a, when a, when a, I forget. But they are allowed to come and live in Ethiopia. And the king of Ethiopia, I think it was a Menelik at that time, a conquering lion with the red, gold, and green of our Rasta Ethiopian colors, allowed safe habitations inside Ethiopia and the Muslims grew strong and the Meccans chased and the Meccans chased them to Ethiopia wanted to wipe them all out because they was worshiping one God and wouldn't worship all their statues so one God religion the same God so I'm here for Muslims and Israelites I'm here for Christians I'm here for all three of you power of the Trinity and I can represent all three of you. My Christian name is Joshua. 
My Muslim name is Tariq, and my Rasta native name is Seven Thunders, just like you got a burning spear, a really great king amongst us Rastas, a musician, a singer, who's not just a minstrel, he sings the word of the Most High, Jehovah God, burning spear. I put a picture of my brother on a true king on the, on the screen, burning spear. My Rasta name is Seven Thunders. My Christian name is Joshua. My native name is Seven Thunders. Christ had many names. So I got my own walk. I've done wrong in the past. I've sinned in the past. But we're not living in the past. We're talking about right now. It's about time to cross the Jordan River spiritually into your promised land. You must sanctify yourself. You must become holy. You must become powerful and mighty in battle, the warriors. And we're about to pass in battle formation to fight spiritually, not against flesh and blood, but against demons, against spirits in dark places that's hurting our people from the unseen and the manifestations in the physical. So, um, I'm going to tell you one more thing. God never told you it's okay to eat pork. He never told you it's okay to defile yourself. Because he needs to live inside you. A fragment of him. And God don't want to be eating pork. When you have a Holy Spirit, God is eating what you eat. God is living in you. He's eating what you eat. He's drinking what you drink. He's doing the things that you are doing. And if you start doing things that God wanna, didn't want to do inside your body, he will leave your body just like he left Samson. Yes, Samson was a deliverer, but Samson slept with prostitutes. I've done, I've never slept with a prostitute, but some of the women I considered my wives was just a little bit more than them, if you want to think, or the worst. At least the prostitute was honest um, by what they were doing. Delilah wasn't honest with Samson. So Samson had slept with prostitutes. He chose the wife from the enemy. She betrayed him. And so he had to slay 30 Philistines and take the outer garments to pay a debt because his wife told them the secret of his, his, his riddle that honey was inside a dead lion and that's how some sweet issued out of something mighty. And she told his riddle. He had to kill 30 Philistines and take their garments. Um, so his life was full of being with the wrong woman. My life is full of being with the wrong women, focusing on women, um, carnal thoughts, um, looking at pictures that I shouldn't have looked at. All of them things I gave up now. So don't come and say, oh, you used to do this, do this, do that. But that's not me anymore. That's gone. I'm somebody new. And all the people that came out of Egypt, you came out with bad ways from Egypt, bad habits from Egypt, bad diets from Egypt, bad idolatry, worship of the bull, and all that, the calf, the statue from Egypt, and all them false gods. You didn't get that up. And there are certain Christians now. There's a new way. You're not giving up the old ways. We're not going to run around here like sheep getting slaughtered this time. We're going to be conquering this time. We're going to take the promised land this time. Now get that straight. God got new marching orders. You need to open up your ears for what God is saying for you to do now. Not what he had them doing that. People got slaughtered. They got fed to the beast. What happened to Peter, one of the best preachers ever in the world, was sad. He got crucified. And he felt he was brave when he felt that he, he was one he was a celebrity in Galilee. You read it in your rancher book, he got the truth. He was a celebrity after he preached one day and two thousand people converted to Christ, to the most high Jehovah God, and after that he was a celebrity and King Herod was afraid of him, and he's afraid of James one of the Zebedees, one of the sons of thunders, because how they preached, how they converted people, how they were more powerful than him. But when Peter went to his crucifixion, he felt honored that he was going to go the way of his master. And he went almost happy. And they took his wife, who was also uh, 
a soldier in the woman's corpse. And they fed her to the wild beasts in the arena. And they ripped her apart. This is what happened to good people back then. If you read your rancher book, what happened to each apostle, what happened to Christ, you will cry. Especially when they're expecting that Christ was going to take King David's throne. That's why Judas turned against him. That's what he thought was going to happen. He was going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. They were going to be rich. They were going to have um, positions in Christ's earthly kingdom. They never even understood until after he died almost that there was not going to be no earthly kingdom. He wasn't going to take the throne of King David, reestablish Jerusalem. His mother thought the same thing. She was sorely disappointed in him. She lost faith in him because he didn't do that. When he could have, and she knew he could have. What he did is he got crucified, and they looked at him like, how could he, when he could have took this, he could have rescued us, he could have did all these things. That's how his apostles was writing. They never fully understood Christ. And that's what's written in the gospel. Writings of men that never fully understood Christ. He was way above their head. His messages were way above their head. They did the best of their ability, and they did lead people to Christ, to God. But they never fully understood his message until after he was gone. Um, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help the, the true Israelites, Rasta. I'm here to help Christians, true Christians. I'm here to help true Muslims. I'm sure that here to help every person that has their individual walk, that worships God, that accepts Christ Michael as their Lord and Savior, and you Rastas that see Celestia as King David resurrected, not the Most High God. You don't necessarily have to believe that. That's not a prerequisite, but that's who he was. He was King David, a short man, beautiful in appearance, mighty in battle. That's who he was. And so I said, I said, you shall once see David slay Goliath again. One of the few things he said in English. Now I'm in this. I am who I am. That's not so important. I'm somebody different this time with that soul that's lived a few times. And God has called me back. To pave the way for Christ's coming, who's greater than I am, and, and I'm not even fit to lace up his sandals, in my opinion. But I'm telling you, he's coming, and it's the truth. He's coming in power. He's coming in glory. He's coming to establish his throne for real. What the apostles wanted back then wasn't going to happen back then. It's happening now. He is going to sit on a throne, way greater than King David's throne. He's going to sit on his own throne. And he's going to rule. He's going to rule from a temple that's going to come to the earth that's going to be 1,500 cubics. This is a cubic from here to here. And that's exactly a cubic. I'm six foot tall. This is three feet. My feet is a 12 inches. I can measure the promise there. It's going to be 1,500 cubics by 1,500 cubics square. And it's going to have a cubic thick walls of precious stones, each representing transparent precious gems, each representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And his light is going to radiate out from that throne. And a river of life is going to come out from under the throne, first just a few inches. And as it goes through the temple, it's going to get deeper and deeper, and it's going to go out of the east gate, my gate, Benjamin's gate. And out of the east gate, it's going to go all over the earth. It's going to have tributaries. It's going to go to the ocean. It's going to go to the rivers, the streams, the creeks, the watersheds. And everywhere that water ushering out of Christ's throne goes, it's going to heal the earth. And many fruit trees will sprout out of the ground from that water. And they will have 12 tree fruits on one tree, one fruit ripening each month. And each fruit will give you everlasting life because the water will come out of the throne of Christ. And his light will light you. So you will rejuvenate. You will rejuvenate. You will grow younger. You will grow healthy. Limbs will grow back. Sight will be growing back. Hearing will be growing back. Your bodies will be perfect in a thousand years millennial. And after the thousand years millennial, with no sickness, no death, the 
the, the demons in the bottomless pit where they can't mislead the nations no more. You'll go back to perfection and then the devil and Satan and Lucifer not in that out, the opposite order will be let out of the abyss for a short time and they will mislead some of you. Even after you live through Armageddon, even after Christ come with his warriors and save you with the seven plagues and the seven bowls poured out, just like on Egypt that let my people go. After you've seen all these miracles and all that, just like Egypt, after being led by God's mighty hand and Moses' leadership out of Egypt, they still backslid in the wilderness, worshiped the calf, did all kind of stuff, and didn't make it into the promised land. They reached the river Jordan and turned right back. So don't do that. Don't reach the river Jordan and turn right back. We've reached the river Jordan now. Christ is about to come and set up paradise on earth. It's the promised land. And we are ushering in. We're starting the seeds of paradise with our centers of light, our communities. I have one up in Jamaica called the Exodus Project. God blessed me to have over four acres for you up in the hills. My brothers just WhatsApp me the other day. They want me down there. They send me blessed love. They're watching the property. Really good young roster brothers. Um, greetings to Zodiac and Sack Cloud and um, Curtis and, and Jace and Little Bees. Um, the crew that I'm working with right now, Arisa and Beth and Mooney and Mary. These are my brothers and sisters, and if I kept naming, I would, this video would go too long. I've got crucial brothers and sisters in Jamaica waiting for me to get there. i got to raise the funds, um, fill in my pond, sell the fish, fill in the pond. And this pond was a learning experience. Um, back on ponds, check Aquascapes. They're really good brothers. Um, Ed Ballou and um, Greg Woodstock and Brian and them. They build ponds, and ponds is really important for the creating of paradise on earth. These centers of light, Airbnbs, um, Exodus camps, survival camps, need a water source, and it should be beautiful. It don't have to be an ugly tank. It could be a beautiful pond with a waterfall, with a stream coming in, with LED lights, with natural filtration, with wetlands filters, with plants growing in it. And you can eat the fish or look at them for beauty if you're vegan vegetarians. I eat fish like Christ did. Christ was a fisherman, so was his apostles. They fished for two weeks and preached for two weeks. Made money for two weeks and preached for two weeks. That's how my camp going to do. We're going to sing songs, do ministering, doing God's work, maybe every other day. But some agriculture project should go at least two weeks and then break off and then do ministering work, healing work, um, spiritual work on people like I'm constituting myself for this day. Um, so my personal religion does not attack your personal religion. My personal religion is not against your personal religion. Our personal ways within God strengthens each other. Um, our individual contribution to the puzzle of God makes the puzzle of God work in harmony and completes it. So you got your own individual way that I am going to help you to the best of my ability to execute. And that's how we come together. We need individuals. We need harmony, not unison. I don't want everybody to be me like some Smiths in the Matrix movie. I want different people. You can have red hair, purple hair, mohawks, bald heads, dreadlocks, whatever you want. But have a heart of, of, of God in you, a, a soul of union with God and oneness with God. Um, and I'm going to tell you right quick, this is how to obtain a Holy Spirit. Pray to God, ask Him to do your, His will over your own. Like one of my ministers, our minister's sister, God minister's sister, Christ minister's sister said to me, she wanted to be 100% of God and none of her. I wanted to be 100% to be 100% of God speaking through me and none of me, acting through me and none of me, growing food through me, doing artwork through me, building computers through me, all these things I do, building houses through me, um, planting trees through me, making waterfalls through me, 
um, doing artwork, writing songs, composing tracks. I want God to be doing that because God does it perfect. I want me to be the channel, only the channel. And I want you to be channels. And you're going to be channeling something different from me. And when you have a different song, a different prayer, a different plan, a different creation, that makes God's life exciting, interesting, fun, funny sometimes. You make God laugh. You make God smile. You make God pump his feet, snap his finger, yoke his head to your music and dance sometimes. God dances, God laughs, God eats, God swims, God camps, God fishes. Christ loved fishing, my daddy loved fishing, my uncle Lester loved fishing, my uncle Mike loved fishing, I love fishing, I'm a fisherman, and I want to fish with Christ. I want to fish with James and John Zebedee, the two best fishermen on all the Sea of Galilee. Them and Christ was the best fishermen. They was, they was hauling in nets and nets and fish making thousands of equipment of dollars back then. They was rolling, and this is why John, who we call himself the most loved of Christ, um, be, Christ did love him, but John was designated as the person to bring money back to Mary and James. James was the head of the family um, when Christ left to administrate money to their family. He sent equivalents of thousands and thousands of dollars back to Mary, got her out of the ghetto in Nazareth, moved her to Capernaum, knew the Sea of Galilee, a seaside house, nice house, big house, that cost a lot back then. He gave all that money because Christ was ingenious. His ships was the fastest ships in all of Galilee. He had a tent making company of multi um, lines of income like I do. Um, he was a caravan leader and he was an interpreter. And all you people out there, I don't want to embarrass you or nothing. Speaking in tongues is not saying, No, that is not speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is speaking fluent languages of all the languages in the world. And on Pentecost AD 14 or something, God and Christ had the Holy Spirit poured out upon 70 disciples of his. And immediately they could speak Chinese, Japanese, the Indian languages, or Arabic, Amharic, Swahili, all the languages of the world that they had to travel to. They could speak those languages fluently. It wasn't gobbledygook. Don't let the devil fool you. You got Holy Spirit. You want to be doing God's word. And you think that's part of it because you, you're practicing a false preacher's way. Those are false preachers. Don't practice what a false preacher of Satan says. The churches are full of false preachers. I am not a false preacher. I am a warrior. And you don't want to step in a 12-foot circle with me with some mixed martial arts gloves on me, guaranteed. Or do competition with me against my bow, I can split arrows. I've never killed nothing with my bow. But I, I've done a lot of target practices. I know how to dial it in, I know how to build bows, I know how to serve bow strings. Um, I know how to make arrows. I'm very proficient with a bow or with a gun. I can do one whole ten groups with a rifle after I dial in the scope. I'm not bragging on these things. I'm the warlord of God, and this cannibal's coming for us in the future to eat the flesh of your children. They will shall eat the flesh of their own children to survive in this Armageddon, is what the prophets say. If they eat their own kids, what will they do to yours? What will they do to you? These movies is the truth. This cannibal's coming. I'm going to be ready. I'm not going to be no sleep sheep to the slaughter. I'm a lion down here to conquer. And as said, my personal way, um, Benjamin is the tribe of the wolf. If you read in your Bible now, I don't know if it's a Mandela effect, the wolf and the sheep, and the sheep or the, lion, the, the sheep and the wolf shall dwell with one, is what it says, as one shall lie. No, the, the wolf shall lie with the sheep, is what it says in the last day. The wolf shall lie with the sheep. 
Um, Benjamin is the wolf, and Judah is the lion. Benjamin is the war tribe. Benjamin is said is ripping and tearing like a wolf. In the morning he brings down the prey, and in the evening he divides the spoil. That's in the Bible. Benjamin is a wolf, ripping and tearing. In the morning he brings down the prey, and in the evening he divides the spoil. Yeah, I'm a hunter. Um, I used to hunt when I was a meat eater, way back. I still have them skills. I'm still a fisherman, and I can divide the spoil in the evening time. You better believe it. And I can protect God's sheep, because when the Lion of Judah wars, the wolf pack of Benjamin obeys. You better believe that. And if you want us to go and attack, to attack the hyenas and jackals and the bad wolves that's attacking the sheep, you got good wolves and you got bad wolves. You got good lions and you got bad lions. You got good people and you got bad people amongst all races, tribes, and religions. There's good and bad up in there in your church. There's good and bad in the dreadlocked so-called Rasta walk. Good and bad everywhere, but that good and bad is being separated, and I'm in this right now. I'm here to help you, and I am a new creation right now. I have new marching orders right now. I have a new way to establish the infrastructure of the promised lands with organic gardening. And so I have a grow channel, Go for Survival. I grow food, I grow cannabis. Because cannabis is our holy sacrament. That's what we use instead of the wine. Because we are Nazarites. No, I'm not telling y'all to stop drinking wine and start using herbs instead. That's for Rastas. That's for Nazarites. You got a different one. Wine is, in moderation is good for you. And everybody can't take the abuse, the persecution, the discrimination, the humiliation of having hair like me and Jesus, and John the Baptist, and Moses, and Elijah, and Joshua, and Samson. This is for us, and not for a lot of you, and I don't want you to do something that's not for you. This is for me. So I'm not trying to say, you be me, you do this, you do that. But sanctify yourself. Obtain the Holy Spirit. When you pray to God to do His will, then God will start leading you to cleanse yourself, to give up pork, butt, gut, and what, unclean food, catfish, shellfish, carnivores, birds of prey, you're not to eat them. You can eat goats, you can eat sheep, you can eat deer, you can eat antelope, as long as they bled, prayed over properly, or bled of all uh, uh, blood, elk, moose, caribou, buffalo even, but take it easy on my tonkas. I want them to repopulate the plains and the Americas and all over the earth spread like a thunderous herd. Again, I'm part of Native American First Nation, all right? So, um, after you give up unclean foods and you fast and purge yourself of toxins and uncleanliness, then when God is ready, he sends a personality of himself into you that indwells you. And in the Urantia book, they call the Holy Spirit an indwelling thought adjuster. Because it adjusts your thoughts from carnal, um, human, imperfect thoughts to the divine, perfect thoughts and guidance of the Most High Creator in Christ. Same will, Father and Son. Christ does the will of the Father, I do the will of the Father and Christ. And you should do the will of the Father, Christ, and your commanders here on the earth of the 144,000. And I'm the chieftain of the tribe of Benjamin. Yeah, the chieftain, the war tribe, because I'm Joshua, son of the Most High God and son of none. And as that's, that's a, a part, even Ryan. Um, this is Joshua 7 Thunders. Once you get a Holy Spirit, you don't need a church. Your body is the church in the temple. You don't need a religion. God inside of you is your religion. And he tells you what you need to do for you. you. You need to do for him. You need to do for Christ. You need to do for your people. And you have your own individual path. And I want to get you to your own individual path so I can see you doing your thing. 
not your preacher's thing, not people's thing 2,000 years ago that was being sacrificed to prove just how wicked Lucifer, Satan, and the devil was. That's why Christ allowed himself to be crucified. So all of the celebrities, all of the angels, celestial beings, I mean, celebrities, <laughs> celestial, they both, could see just how dirty Lucifer, who challenged him for the lead of this universe, was. He wasn't worthy to lead. Look how dirty and dishonorable he was. What he did to Michael. Defenseless. Lucifer didn't give up his celestial powers. I'm not going to say divine powers. They weren't divine anymore. He did still have fallen angelic powers. And he gives it to people now. Makes them celebrities, stars, leaders of country if they bow before him. Really good guitar players, really good actors, really good singers. We allowed one of his demons to get inside their body and call themselves Satia Fierus or something instead of their original name. Now God's spirit gets inside a person your name might change too, but it may change to Naomi. It may change to Elijah, like with Daniel. Maybe he should change his name to, well, Elisha. No, I ain't going to say who Damien is. You know, Bob Marley maybe should have went by Joseph or Moses. But he was Bob because he had a different thing to do. So I'm seven thunders now. Because I got a different thing to do. All right? So once you get your Holy Spirit, God is powerful inside you. God is ingenious inside you. God is extremely creative through you. And you start creating things. It could just be new hair dupes. It could be new clothing outfits. It could be new ways to grow food. New ways to grow our Holy Sabbath cannabis. I create LED grow lights with my own nanometers or color spectrums that I tune to the growth of flowers, fruits, or vegetative growth. I include ultraviolet to put resins, healing resins on the earth. As sunscreen block, I use ultraviolet 375 nanometer below the visual spectrum. But I ain't gonna get into all of that. Um, God will make you genius. God will make you provision at your businesses. He will make you healthy. And I'm extremely healthy at my age. I wanna have exercise videos, but I need to have a platform. God willing, I plan on building a deck overhanging my plan, and I can do some exercise videos. To the glory of God, show my fitness, because I am extremely fit. I do over 100 push-ups a set. I mountain bike, great dips. I won quite a few medals here in Michigan and Hawaii mountain biking. Um, and this is not bragging. God does this through me because I have a Holy Spirit, so you can believe me. By my works, by my painting, by my ponds, by my buildings I'm doing down in Jamaica, by the trees that I grow, the fertilizers, God in Christ, whom I open up my temple to, cleanse my temple for, so they can do enjoyable things inside of me. They can hug you through me, kiss you on your forehead and cheek, massage your shoulders, give you healing tonics which I make, healing drinks that rejuvenate you and reverse your aging that I make. And I plan to have recipes for them on this channel, the most healing tonic. And I'm not going to make no medical claims, but they keep you extremely healthy. They have the potential to do that. It's done it with me and a, a, quite a few people. I want to give you those recipes, teach you how to make friction fires, bamboo fires, bow fires when you run out of matches, how to filter your water, um, how to build shelters, how to climb a coconut tree or get, yeah, and I still climb coconut trees, it's very difficult, how to get up into the crown of the coconut tree, how to kick them down or chop down the bunch and lower them with a rope so they don't break. Um, I have experience to share with you. I have knowledge of failure to share with you so you don't fail. So you don't waste a whole lot of money on failed projects or failed crops. These mistakes I've made, getting with the wrong woman, with the wrong woman, getting with the wrong people. I'm not sitting here saying I'm holier than no, I've lived, I've taken some bruises, some cuts, some stabs, been ran off cliffs, been betrayed. Um, 
stolen from tricked. So I'm going to lead you out of these chairs, snares, and traps of evil, of Satan in them. So you don't step in them. You don't go down that bad route. But I know the good ways too. I've been up to the hilltops and I've seen the way to God's promised land. I've seen what's surrounding me. I've seen things, creations. I've had visions that I'm not sharing here because they're horrifying for some people. I know things that's coming that I can't speak about to you now, that I had visions and I don't really remember my dreams. And I got to see who I was in the future, so I'm standing up now and doing what God sent me here to do, and I'm being about my father and my king's work. So don't look over at me and say, I ain't doing it like you, or I'm not preaching the gospel. The gospel was for back there. Now we got a different calling right now. You need to listen to what God and Christ is saying now, what your Holy Spirit is saying now. Back then he might have said, march south. Now it's time to march north, south as a boom, booby trap, right? There's an ambush in the south. When you say turn and march south, north, and you say, oh, in the scriptures it said march south, and I'm going to stick with that. No, God said go north. Now, I'm not saying that. This is just an example, analogy. You need to march what God say to march now. If he say, stop eating pork now, and he allowed people to eat pork for a while because he knew they wouldn't give up pork. But now you need to get superhumanly strong. You need to get physically fit, and I'm superhumanly strong. I'm not like a mere mortal down here. Um, I'm immortal down, e immortal down here, just as God is, because God is in me. I can't die. All right, I'm going to live forever, and I want my brothers and sisters to live forever. Get your Holy Spirit, and it's different than mine but it comes from the same source. It fits you, okay? Your Holy Spirit is gonna be skilled in what your mission, your calling is, not mine, I'm a warrior. So don't be looking at me like, why you got them bows? Why you got mixed martial arts? Why you been studying martial arts for like 40 years? Um, well, I got to protect the sheep. I'm one of the shepherds. You be a sheep and let me be the shepherd, okay? You be the sheep and let us be the lions <laughs> and the wolves. <laughs> and not the bad wolves, not the one that was waiting for a little riding hood and all of that. No, God has wolves too. God has wolves as warriors that are rip the hyenas and the jackals apart if they take one step towards God's sheep. Do you hear me? You sheep could lay in my camp. And I'll stay up late and howl at the moon and, and call for my mates that I've been lost or whatnot. But I'm going to be watching over you because I'm insomniac. And I wish somebody would. No, I ain't going to say I wish somebody would. I get bored sometimes, you know. I've just like some martial arts people that have learned all kinds of martial arts never got to use none of them. They wish somebody would touch you, okay, or try to touch you. You can get the finger close so we can break that finger. All right, so this is Joshua Seven Thunders. This is Exodus Survival Ministry. I want you to turn towards the Most High Jehovah God. Don't toward, towards me, you know, turn towards your mission. Don't be paying so much attention to what I'm doing. I got my own works, my own problems to work out and whatnot. You be you and I'm going to be me and we're going to be doing God's will individually and in harmony, okay? You be your part of the puzzle of paradise, and I'll be mine. But I'm gonna be working for you, and you're gonna be working for me, and we're gonna serve and protect each other. Well, you might not protect me, I'm gonna serve and protect you, okay? God is who protects me. Christ is a warrior this time. Remember that, he ain't coming as no pacifist sheep. He saw what y'all did to him when he came that way. And I made the same mistake in my life. I came peaceful in front of some people. After they even kicked me in my face while people was holding me, you know what I mean? Hit me in my jaw, busted my lip, and I threw them people off me, knocked the mess out of them, threw the guys down the stairs, and the lion come up in me. Because the sheep didn't work with these kind of people, all right? 
So I'm going to tell you again, this is Seven Thunders, this is Exodus Survival Ministry. I truly, really do love you. God loves you. Christ loves you. And because God loves you and Christ loves you, I love you. God is here. This year is going to be a prosperity with God's true people. God is going to give you the resources to get to the promised lands. Get out of the country if you need to. Get to Ghana. Get to Costa Rica. Get to the hills of Jamaica. Get dual citizenship. Invest in that country. Invest in that economy. That's not preventing you from being Christians. Not preventing you from worshiping Allah as Muslims. The one God, Jah, Allah, Ryan, same one. And the way that God chooses for you, nobody should interfere with your spiritual walk. And if you're in that, get to a place that they don't. The Most High Creator has made this earth broad and wide enough with enough empty, wild, beautiful spaces that you don't have to stay where you're fighting or fought against, Ukraine. And I, I admonish all the nations of the world, I'm not political, to open your borders to refugees in Ukraine, people making their exodus, open the borders to these people to get out of the UK so their children is not in threat, them, their wives being bombed. Can you imagine your child going to sleep not knowing if a bomb going to come through their roof, sleeping in graveyards so they don't get bombed, sleeping in the most unlikely places that they don't get bombed. What if it was you? No, I would open my house up. You know, it's under repair from being arson on me. I'm under attack. But I open my house, my property up to refugees out of Africa, out of Syria, out of Yemen, out of Ukraine, out of Mexico, out of Venezuela, anywhere that my people are. I wish I had a broad enough space, a big enough land to set up camps for all of them, cook big vegetarian two stew pots for all of them like I cook. Um, give them land to plant up, you know, I mean, start growing food, start building, start working in unison as God's people and people should be free to go any place in the world if they're not a criminal. If they're coming up loving, coming up lifting, coming with resources, coming with skills, it's time to break down the borders, knock down the walls. You can't keep Mexicans out of this country. Are you crazy, Latino? Mexicans are extremely skilled. You know, in Mexico, they got some of the best knife makers. They got some of the best mechanics to fix cars, keep cars running for 40, 50 years. Go down there and look. Same in Jamaica, same in Africa. These brothers that has little resources are the best mechanics, best carpenters, best craftspeople, best artisans. Open the borders. Break down the walls like the German um, iron curtain. Break down all these borders. If you're good, if you got to, I don't care, Chinese, Japanese, Syrian, Middle Eastern, Indian, you know, Pakistani, don't make a difference to God. Don't make a difference to Christ. Don't make a difference to the angels. What country you come from, you're our people if, if you accept us as God, if you, if you accept him as your father, as your creator, he accepts you. If you accept Christ as your sovereign ruler, as your king, he'll accept you, make the changes so you can fit into the family. Cleanliness, righteousness, obeying the Ten Commandments, the three golden rules. That's all you have to do. It don't take a whole religion to do this. After this video, you should have your own way without having to read, crack a book. The Holy Spirit will guide you. When you're clean, when you're pure, when you're doing things that God wants to share in. God wants to go fishing with me. Christ wants to go fishing with me. He wants to go camping. He wants to go walk to the waterfalls. He wants to heal you. He wants to cook for you. He wants to, he wants to massage your back and feet sometimes. Um, let him do them things through you.
Let him build houses for people through you. Let him heal through you. Let him love through you. Kiss people on the cheek and eye. Give them a big hug through you. Look into their eyeballs and say, I love you. What can I do for you? Through you. I'm looking in your eyes right now. I love you. What can I do for you? This is Joshua Seven Thunders. This is Exodus Survival. Love. Love God. Love Christ. Love yourself. Love your Holy Spirit with an interest. Commune with her or him. Become one with her or him. So everything you do is divine. Regardless how you look, regardless of your past walk, regardless of your past bad habits, you are new people now. Here today I'm sanctifying you in the name of Jehovah God, in the name of Allah, the same one. In the name of Michael, Michael if you pronounce it that way, Yahshua, Jesus, same one in his name. Here today I'm leading you to sanctification, to purity to paradise, to the promised land. This is Joshua, this is Growth for Survival, also known as Seven Thunders, also known as Ivan Quinn. This is Exodus Survival Ministry. May the Most High bless you with everything you need. May the Most High bless you with all the good things you want. May the Most High grant you a Holy Spirit to guide, to lead you, to make you superhuman, to make you divine. In the name of Michael, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yahshua, I ask these things. Salah. Amen. I love you. I love you with a divine, superhuman love. Stay positive. Stay with God. Stay with Christ. And stay ready for anything.